morning trainiacs. This is gonna suck. It's gonna be slightly embarrassing. Normally, people take these before and after photos during the after when they don't look like this. So for the past, well, two months or so, what I've been telling all of you is that due to coronavirus, due to lockdown, due to races being canceled, due to the surgery that I have right here, that I wasn't training a whole lot. Well, that's true, but it's not the main reason that I haven't been training a whole lot. And to be honest, I've been nervous to share this with you because I look like that and everyone seems to like the raw, raw, let's go. I don't have a whole lot of raw, raw right now. Trainiacs, the reason that I'm not training a whole lot and the reason that I am in the worst shape that I've been in probably in, I wanna say seven or eight years, goes back to 2017. And coming into that year, I decided that I wanted to commit to triathlon training. And I ended up going forward with a program that was nothing but hard work. Over the course of 2017, the differences between an easy day and a hard day, really indistinguishable. The difference between easy week and a hard week, the joke was that we really couldn't tell the difference in our training group. And over the course of that year, I started getting the first few blood tests that I was seeing where vitamin D was low, DHEA was low. I was starting to feel really dumpy. And by the end of that year, I was so overtrained that I was injured that any time I trained for longer than about 10 days in a row, I would be sick. I was sick five times over the winter between 2017 and 2018. And it all ended at one point where I was lying in bed basically crying because I didn't know if I was gonna be able to do triathlon again. Now I ended up taking a little bit of rest, changing my program, learning a heck of a lot from talented coaches like Dan Plews and Matt Dixon that easy means easy, that rest means rest, that the more is better approach didn't always work and it really doesn't work and the science doesn't support it, but we've got this culture of go and train and if you want it bad enough, you are going to have to suffer for it, which is completely inaccurate and it's what got me into that situation back in 2017. Now I got back to racing and the first race back that I did was Half Ironman Coeur d'Alene where I set a personal best. I then went on to compete at the Half Ironman World Championships and then this past year I ended up continuing to train albeit with a lot better science with a lot of zone two training with a lot of rest days with a lot of monitoring about how I was performing and making sure I was constantly progressing, which is why you still saw me setting PBs, basically race after race after race, but my body wasn't fully recovered from 2017. And this past winter, when I was in Arizona and Santa Barbara, came to the point that my body just stopped absorbing the training. And that gets us into the point that we're at now and I wanna share where I'm at and what overtraining can actually lead to because it's very serious. And this attitude of more is better and people that see how easy I run and the low power numbers that I put out for the long bike rides and say, oh, you know, Taryn really doesn't take this seriously. And then maybe even say, when I put together a good race, they're like, Pfft. He must have cheated, he must have drafted, or he must have cut the course because he's in tight with Iron Man. If you've seen our last video, you know that that's not true. Because they're convinced that you have to constantly be suffering to do well. And that's not the case. Suffering leads to this. So this here is some testing that I've done with a functional medicine practitioner from down in the States who Kim is working with to get over the last little bits of her overcoming Lyme. And she thought that 
he would be really good for me to work with. A few of the things that he's shown are, number one, my neurotransmitters, like my, my feeling, my serotonin, my dopamine, all of these things that give me the, the highs and the lows, the feelings, they're completely off, they're completely out of whack. And he asked, like, how does it feel when you're happy? Or how does, how does it feel when you're sad? And I'm like, honestly, both of them feel kind of like nothing. I don't really feel happiness or sadness. I'm just flat. And he's like, well, yeah, you've got really no neurotransmitters going on up in your brain. Right here, he's got the mitochondrial markers. That's the energy producers in the cells. Low, low, not bad. Low, low, low. And he says, I'm surprised that you are able to actually function very well as an athlete. Next thing is the nutritional markers. Despite me taking vitamin B, vitamin B6, vitamin B2, low. I take a lot of vitamin C every single day. Very low. Vitamin CoQ10, very low. Glutathione, low. Biotin, very, very low. Despite me taking nutritional supplements to make sure that these things are high. So then there's signs of overtraining and then right here, this clostridia infection is an indication that I now have a stomach infection. And then there are indications tracing itself all the way back to 2017 that at the time my cortisol was high and now it's low. So what was happening is there was just so much constant stress. Cortisol is the stress hormone that when you undergo stress, Cortisol goes up and then it naturally comes down. But when you're constantly every day, stress, 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 your cortisol just stays high, ends up burning itself out. And now I'm in the situation where all of a sudden my hormones are low. He has an 84 year old patient with better hormone profiles than me, which is why I feel dumpy why I'm not able to absorb training, why I'm not able to recover and felt a fair bit kind of muscle soreness back in January when training ramped up, why my sleep is disturbed, why I look worse than I have in about eight years, despite eating cleaner than I have in my entire life. And no matter how much I count calories and limit calories, or try to eat more calories to speed up my metabolism, I just keep doing nothing but putting on weight. Because what the indications are is that essentially my body isn't processing anything right now. And because I got, well, no nutrients, I'm just gonna hold on to everything regardless of whether I need it or not. So with all that said, when I started working with Evan, he said, well, can you take time off? And historically, the answer has been no, because I felt this obligation to always be triathlon Terran, that I always looked fit, and that I was always putting out personal bests, because that's what everyone responds to. But fact of the matter is that progression in life isn't always just whoop, straight up. Sometimes there's whoop, straight up, and then you crash. The thing that I'm going through right now is that, heck, lockdown, no races, this could not have come at a better time because now I don't have to train all the time. I don't have to train for the next PB. I am really, really self-conscious about being on Instagram and in these videos right now is like supposedly a symbol of health. Meanwhile, I'm really unhealthy and I'm really not training a lot, but I want to share with everyone that sometimes you've got to take two steps back to take five steps forward. Because here's the spin and the good thing about all this. Lockdown, no racing. I don't have to worry about anything. I can take that step back and worry about nothing besides getting healthy. And you know what? If I get healthy and my hormones come back into check and my nutrient levels are up and I can sleep a lot and my mitochondrial function, like literally the energy producers in the muscles come back online, all of a sudden think about how much potential there could be when I was setting personal bests all last year while in a non-good state. So while right now it's this mind bender where I've got to accept that I'm posting stuff online that I'm kind of embarrassed about, it's for a long-term goal. And that's kind of one thing that I want to share with you that whether it's because of lockdown or because of an injury or because of work or because of your family growing, sometimes even good things, that it doesn't always just go in this straight line and that there are gonna be setbacks, but how you deal with those setbacks 
is what can make you a better athlete, person, human, father, spouse, worker, entrepreneur, whatever it is, how you get over those is what matters. Now, let me show you how serious it is that we're taking this with the regimen that I just started yesterday that is hopefully gonna get me back on the track of getting healthy. So this in here is my current medicine cabinet. What we've got is we've got some microbiome support, some mito boost for a little bit of mitochondria. And I have no affiliation with these companies. Pure Digest to help with absorbing everything. Super, super high dose vitamin C. Adapt here, adaptogens to help support the hormonal system. With me basically not absorbing any nutrients, the body is just hanging on to everything. And it's also telling me that I am constantly hungry, like literally all the time. I can finish a pizza and then still be hungry after. So hopefully this helps with that. Glutathione Pro, and then this Tox Ease Bind. And this is everything that I'm taking. So I don't really mean for this video to be a big Debbie Downer for you, but I thought that I needed to be honest about why you're not seeing me rah rah virtual this thing and challenge this thing that sometimes it's not all about just doing more work. A, because it can get you into a whole lot of trouble and B, sometimes a step back is what you need and more isn't what's going to get you out of the problem that you got yourself into. And that steps back are okay sometimes. So you shouldn't feel bad about it. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm still training. I'm still triathlon tearing. I'm still swim, bike, running, doing a little bit of strength training whenever I can. It's just at a lower level and frankly, fairly lucky that we've been gifted this opportunity to take a step back from triathlon and focus on some other things. So that's what's up. If you want to follow along to how somebody gets back to fitness and still tries to get to the Ironman World Championship in Kona, which I'm still going to try to do, hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for being around, Trainiacs.